exceptionally cold. I'm not recording. Anyway, um, when that happens, the gas can natural gas companies in southern New England and Boston, et cetera, are mandated under law to provide their gas for home heating first, not for power generation. So power stations get curtailed, and if we end up with a week long, you know, sub zero event, and the natural gas gets scarce, ISO starts scrambling on, okay, how are we gonna cover this demand? They like to have an extra 5,000 megawatts at all times. And there are times when we're under a thousand. So they develop, they develop this committee, I'm on it. And uh, so it's good for Hardwick. You know, we're gonna have a lot of really good insight and uh, I'm gonna be, it's, uh, have access to good information for purchase power stuff for us and uh it's a really good thing so i just share that stuff we're working on uh the sewer line easement for our warehouse our sewer system failed over there and i decided to tie us into the municipal system and we paid those fees and we had it engineered and the neighboring property owner said yeah no problem with an easement and then when it came time to sign the easement his wife said no way uh, but we've worked that all out, took a couple of months to get there. Uh, so that's all done and signed and we'll be doing that as a spring project. Uh, guys have been working, uh, obviously work is, customer work is slow because it's winter, that's pretty normal. We shift this time of year to maintenance and upgrade projects. And we're doing a big one right now on the transmission line between our substations which includes adding the express circuit I've been talking about for probably a year or two uh, that's gonna give us full system redundancy. So outages will be very short if and when we have them, uh, system-wide outages I mean. And we're also, as part of that project, building a underbuilt, a lower voltage circuit to serve a new uh, hemp facility that's projected to be our biggest customer in the system. So that'll be a welcome addition. We just completed a few weeks ago, a LIDAR project for, to, for our needs, but also to assist uh, the CUDs with their fiber build out. So LIDAR is a um, light detection and ranging system, which uses satellite signals to actually locate poles and wires, right to the wire they can do it. And uh, they, they, the contract I signed with them is they had to, locate no less than 75% of our poles, which they did. The other ones are under tree cover or you know, had, had to be located by other means, which we're working out right now, but that project went great. And uh, the CUDs are using that data to continue into their uh, build out projects that they need to work on. So that was a good thing to get done. One thing I wanted to share is uh, we, I've had some trucks on order now some pickup trucks for over 36 weeks and we're still waiting for them. I don't know if the town is running into the same problems, but because of that, I checked on hotline trucks too. And normally we can order a truck and get it built, spec and built within about 12 months. And the manufacturers are telling me, well, it's over 12 months just to get the chassis and then it's running about another 14 months to build the trucks. So over, well over two years to get a truck at this point. I don't know if you guys are seeing the same thing, but that really, if you're, if you're unaware, you should start planning ahead. Um, okay, I have the VEPSA summary of variance reports and they show that we, for, the, for 2021, we had a 96% uh, coverage rate and we were 2% under budget uh, for the year. So that's really good. Our revenues year to date were 6% over budget and year to date expenses were 1.73 under. So those were both good news as well. And we are starting our 2021 audit next week, which is way early, which I love. 
because usually we're scrambling at the end. But our auditor and Paish lost two of their staff people, uh, one to a retirement, one to a health issue. So they're they're excited about getting in early with us and getting us done. So that's that's a welcome uh, expressed or quicker run schedule. Was somebody wanting to ask me something there? I was just wondering if um, when you said year to date, that's this 2022, just January. That's up to 2021, December 31, 2021. Okay, so that was a those were full year figures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're always behind. I don't have January yet because we're always behind because the ISO settlements don't come for six weeks or whatever. Okay. What else have we got here? So we got some other upcoming projects this year. Uh, the sluice gate that was put off is going to be a hot topic at the hydro this year. We, we did complete the uh, surge tower foundation. That was a huge project. And I wanted to share some pictures with you tonight, but I didn't want to screw up this Zoom thing. So I'll try and just shoot you all an email of the before and after, the before, uh, during, and after photos so you can check that out. Uh, what else have I got here? Okay, large project. Well, any, are there any questions about anything? Uh, I have a couple. I was wondering, is the H11 project online? H11 has been online since uh, November 10th, right around there. Great. And it actually is, has been generating pretty good considering it's winter. The, if you go down there today, there's, there's no snow on the array. It's pretty awesome. Great. Awesome. Yep. Um, do you have a date for when your website's going to be back up to date? Yeah, we have a, we have a new agreement with a new provider. And uh, we had a kickoff meeting last, at least two or three weeks ago. And he is contracted to have a new site for us up and running by the end of February. Oh, that's pretty soon. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Any other questions for Mike? I have one. Uh, do you have an idea when that you're going to want to tie into the sewer? Oh, not till spring. Okay. Yeah, we've got a, a temporarily permanent porta potty available for right now, so we're good. Just just give me a, a a week or so notice so we can line that up. Yeah, I I would say you know mid April something like okay. that. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um. I'm moving on to, looks like we're on to item number one, select board to decide on an in-person versus Australian ballot town meeting. Um, and uh, so we're allowed again this year to do Australian ballot, which is what we did last year. Um, we talked about it in our last meeting. Uh, COVID still seems to be raging all around us. And uh, I guess our discussion last meeting was mostly centered around, it might not be a great idea to bring hundreds of people together in the school. Well, we didn't know last meeting, one was the state going to provide any funds to offset the cost of sending ballots to everybody and all of that. Do we know that now? I don't believe they are. We haven't heard anything in our office about them doing that this year. And last year that came from, uh, it was, I think that was led by the Secretary of State's office, right? Yes. So if you were to choose to mail, that would be, I think, on the town's cost wise this year. Yeah. 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 What did it cost? Casey and I figured it would be, um, depending on the size, the weight of it, probably between 4,000 and 4,500 to mail to all active registered voters. Because you have to stamp the outside and the return on hold. That doesn't sound like a huge amount of money. In the interest of public health. Last year, we had pretty good participation um, through the process, right? Last year, we re received 560 
absentees back of what was mailed out, which was around 2,300. Um, but of that 560, Albert and I estimated probably 60% returned them to us at the firehouse the day of election. Not by more than that. Huh. Do we have to, if we mail them out, do we have to provide postage on the return? Yes. We do, okay. Other thoughts on doing a in-person versus, an in-person town meeting versus going to an Australian ballot? I'm so okay Tanya, oh, Michael, go ahead. I'm okay with it. With which, which way you with, want to go? With not going to an in person town meeting. With doing the Australian ballot? Yes. And Tanya, you guys would set up in the firehouse again? Is that what your yes. plan would be? Yeah, we already talked to Tommy and it was available. Casey got in contact with whoever does the COVID testing and they are out early afternoon on Monday. So we have plenty of time to set up. And then they're not there on Tuesdays. And uh, all right, does anybody, is anybody in the select board leaning toward doing an in-person town meeting? No. Do you want like a motion to do a Australian ballot town meeting? It, would that be helpful? That would be very helpful. Do you wanna, do you wanna also make that motion to uh, mail out do you want to mail out ballots absentee ballots to everybody because we don't have to that's a separate question or do we want to do that separately is, i have a question um is there um a requirement that those ballots have to be mailed out or they do not have to can you stop in if you're if you want a ballot yeah or you can call email and request one and we can mail you one too okay so um, rather than providing 2,300, 20. We're at, um, with, cause we don't have to mail them to challenge voters. So that would be as of today, 2,033 people. That we mailed so to. we, we mailed out to that roughly 2,033 people. We got 500 back via in the mail or total. No. Oh. They, they came to the fire. Yes. Okay. So, um, maybe mailing them. I mean, I'm just looking at logistics and, you know, if people don't feel comfortable, they can reach out. We can put that on front porch form that they can reach out to the town clerk's office and then provide them with one at their request. And you can come in early. Once the ballots are available, you can come in and use the memorial right across the way. And yeah, do, it that do an absentee ballot. Yes. Yeah. Tony, which is like easier for you? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Liz. Which is easier for you? To just mail them out en masse or deal yeah. with? Deal with the phone calls, not mail them. Okay. okay. I think that's a good idea as well. Sarah, you're on mute. Sorry, yeah, I had barking dogs happening. Um, <laughs> Ernie's got an opinion about this, apparently. Uh, so I'll make the motion that we um, we do not have an in-person town meeting, as sad as that is for me to do, and um, in light of public safety, and that we um, do a That's mass good. information program to let people know that they need to request their ballot. So, the, so your motion is to do an Australian ballot yeah. town meeting instead of in person. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Any more discussion on that? So that it's just to do the um, Australian ballot for the town meeting and uh, so no in person meeting, but we'll try to and and we won't mail out to everybody on the 
on the list, but people can still call the town clerk or stop by and get an absentee ballot if they desire. Otherwise, voting will be on town meeting day at the firehouse. We'd also like to request um, permission from you guys again this year to set up for the ballots in the tabulator we did last year, so we don't have to hand it out. Yeah, and that that had a price tag too of yeah. something. Last year, last year it was thirty six hundred, but that included printing forty eight. Well, twenty four. 2,430 ballots, which we wouldn't have to print that many because we wouldn't be mailing them to everybody. Yep. But with the last year, the most of it was 3,600. I don't know this year's what it would be. That's what last year was, 3,600. Okay, so let's deal with that after we vote on the, the current thing. So any more um, discussion about doing Australian ballot instead of an in-person town meeting? All in favor, please say aye. 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 So that's all four of us. So the motion carries. All right. So second motion sounds like, um, do you want to, uh, yeah, we probably can just have a motion to uh, have to have the town clerk's office um, do the, what do you call them? The tabulator, tabulator ballots. Well, I'll move that that the town clerk's office do tabulator ballots and that people be informed that they can request a ballot absentee, they can come into the town clerk's office and pick it up, or they can vote in person at the, the firehouse on town meeting day. Second. Any more? Dis any discussion about that? That was a long motion. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So that's everybody. So motion carries. Thank you. Um, that's good. So we have a plan for town meeting, and with I really hope that next year we can have an in-person town meeting which is what I was hoping for last year, but here we are. I know, right? Hmm. Yeah. All right. Item number two on the agenda, um, we had Judith Ruskin and associate to discuss requests for an article on the town meeting warning about a right to know policy on wireless communication technologies. So. Yeah, are you here for Judith? Okay, I'm going to move the camera so you can speak to the board. It's right here. You're fine. Yeah, you can sit. You can sit right here. Right where else? Hello. There's, is it just you? Okay, you're you're on. Oh, yep. Uh, yeah. So so, go ahead if you like to explain or just state your name and then uh, explain uh, what you're what you're here for. Uh, my name is Brenda Bollier, and I'm here for the right to know um, with respect to five G. Slide over a little bit. So I mean, you're here, so you can. Yell. Slide over. Slide over. It's down the street. Down the street. I'm going to tilt this over. Yeah. Okay, you're in the middle right here. Yeah. The, the board is here. Yeah. Thank you. Some of the members and then some of the public. So thank you. The, uh, this is the microphone. I appreciate you working with us on the, the meeting. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Did you want something else? 
Did you need to know something else? Uh, well, sure. I mean, if you'd like to state anything about why you'd like this added to the warning, we'd, we'll listen to it. Well, I'm of the opinion that um, as far as what is going to be put in areas of the town or that possibility thereof, that everyone has the right to know uh, when and where this is going to happen since it may affect them adversely or otherwise. So that's... Okay. <laughs> So, and, um, and so the idea is that, okay, so, so we've had this come before the board in the past. And um, one of the things that we noted was that this information is available um, from the Public Utility Commission, who's the one who regulates this stuff. And they have a website where they note all the projects that are pending. That's where you would comment on anything anyway. So what is, so the idea with this is what? right to know as far as this town is concerned and um, the select board um, being aware of this possibly happening um, of any um, cell towers or whatever being placed in the town okay how do you envision this happening just in, in your mind what would this look like um, that's a little difficult, although down the line, it's, there's a possibility that it may be very near to houses um, and can be actually directed at the house. So can you just, no, you're fine, you're fine. So can you, you're referencing to it and me the yeah, can you define what I, I could probably explain a little okay. better? Okay, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> let me just introduce myself. My name is John Brabant. Um, I'm not a resident of Hardwick. Uh, I was asked to, to come here by some of your constituents. Um, by way of background, um, I used to work at the agency of natural resources for 25 years, but that's not really relevant tonight. But I do currently sit on the CALS. Select board. I've been a 16 year member of the Cal Select Board. And the reason I was asked to come tonight was to kind of ask, answer some of the questions that you'd like you're posing now. Because um, they're very similar to what was raised um, at our very last Select Board meeting when this issue was raised there. And in fact, I, I forwarded, I brought it to the meeting as one of the Select Board members. Um, yes, it's true that the well, let me first back up. The it is uh, radio frequency uh, producing transmission apparatus, whether it's cell towers, uh, the 5K, uh, the 5G thing is what is the real concern now with this technology. And I don't know how much time you have, and I won't get into much detail unless you want me to, but the way the 5G technology works is it's a very high powered, different than cell towers at a distance, which I used to, I'm not anti-cellular. I use it all the time um, for work and, and pleasure. Um, but this 5G is really concerning to a lot. In fact, right now it's been put on hold because the, 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 the power of this signal is so great and the bandwidth that it, it occupies on the radio frequency spectrum is such that it interferes um, with uh, the altimeters on jet aircraft. And when they're doing an instrument only landing or takeoff or at an airport, um, they're concerned that it's gonna interfere with that and there could be some repercussions. So it's been put on hold for that reason. That, But that's not the concern for you all. Um, the concern is that it's it's highly directional and it, it doesn't trap, it doesn't, deal well with obstacles, trees, uh, fences, and whatnot. And it's these transmission apparatus, these antenna are gonna be set in downtown locations first, not near rural locations. It'd be places like Hardwick, Montpelier. They're already, we know they're already being installed in, in 
Burlington for the last year and a half. They're just not turned on yet because it hasn't been fully deployed. So are these uh, residential installations? No, they, they, the way it works, 5G technology is anticipated to work. If you have a 5G compatible phone, I don't know if mine is or not, I think it's not. Um, but if you had a 5G phone and you're walking down Main Street and it was already deployed, every other pole is what the plan is. They have these transmission, these transmitters. And in many cases, and this is what we found in Burlington, they look the same as you would, you, you think they're transformers. So they don't, you don't realize it. They're set a little bit lower and they may not be fully operational until you get on your phone and you start videoing or using something that uses 5G um, proximate to these transmitters and your phone turns on that transmitter and they call it beam technology. This is the industry language, not me. They call it beam technology and it beams to the, the device that is signaling to it and it's a high intensity beam. So, well, if, we, if it's just a user, I think most people wouldn't care too much, but because anybody in between that user or approximate to that user is also going to be hit with that beam. As you walk away from that pole, and in closer proximity to the next transmitter, that one turns off, the next one turns on. So, but just by way, um, uh, I came here tonight because just to show that- John? Town, yes? I apologize for interrupting, but Eric is hungry. The technology of this is complicated and I half understand it. And I'm sure that there's lots I can find out but we're not really talking about the technology. Correct. I'm asking about a process right. that, that you're asking for a right to know, what does the language, do you have the I language, have language. To on the, have. you have it to put on the ballot and what does the process look like? What are you really yeah. expecting us to do? Okay, so let me first explain very briefly um, the process that was made reference to by I think it's Eric, I can't see with my old eyes. Um, I apologize. The process at the PUC, is, is this, this is deployed on an expedited time frame, and there's minimal notification. And the notification when an application for a 5G antenna is filed, and there are probably hundreds now pending across the state, all right? And they're, be, they're being issued. There's, there's little to no public process. The process has been a Ford in order to rapidly deploy this stuff. There's a lot of pressure at the, from the FCC to do this. Um, is in Vermont, the notice goes to the town and to the property owner uh, uh, who, who owns the property where the pole is located. So that property owner might own have a pole down, down one end by the road and his or her home might be very far away up the hill, right? But the neighbor, who's right across the road or right next door to the pole gets no notice. And we already saw this in the North End of Burlington. Um, so- Who that gets the notice in the town? So- uh, say the notice comes to uh, the town, who in the town? Who is it addressed to? So I, I would assume the PUC sends it to the town government. And in your case, if you have a, a town clerk, I'm guessing you do, it would go to the clerk, uh, the town manager. The clerk and not the manager. And yeah, and, and so your, your town office gets sent to, we'll say the office of the town of Hardwick. Okay, so it goes to, to the town of Hardwick office. Yep. It's and not that it gets blanketed to everybody in the town. No, it's not. So that's what this initiative is about. The idea is to, when the town gets that notice, they might put, come up with something simple. This is what we're gonna do in Calus. We'll, we're gonna put it on our website. And so folks who are interested in this, as soon as the town of Calus gets a notice, we're gonna put it up on the website and we're also gonna likely gonna post it on front porch form. It's really simple. And let me read to you the, the language that will be on the warning for 20, our 2022 uh, town meeting in the town of Callis. And it simply says, and you could replicate this, shall the voters of the town of Callis require its town government to inform and provide notice to its residents when sources of radiation such as, but not limited to, that generated by cell towers and transmitters, Wi-Fi tower transmitters and 5G antennas are being proposed for licensing. And that's a, that's a legal term, licensing meaning uh, under uh, 
A, I think, is a section of law, uh, Title 30, Section 248A, uh, licensing an installation within the town limits. So if when, when that notice comes from the Public Utility Commission, it may actually not be the PUC, the Public Utility Commission. It actually might be the provider, Verizon or AT&T, most likely. They have, as part of their application, uh, the application process, they're required to provide notice according to the, the statute. And that's the town and the property owner. I have a question. Yes. Um, so does the, the provider um, of that device, of that mm -hmm. um, transformer, or what did you call it? The, the transmitter. The transmitter. Mm -hmm. um, do they lease space on utility poles? The, the law requires... <laughs> <laughs> the law requires a, the utility, in your case, I guess it's hardwood electric, right. is required by law, I think it's federal law, and it preempts the states from saying anything, it requires hardwood electric to provide space on their poles. And I, I think I'd have to, you'd have to confirm that. I'd like to confirm that. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I, I do this for my job. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, you should. It's yeah. good. It's, it's Part of the educational process yeah. but this is about letting your public know and there'll be supporters of it and there are people who don't like it and there will most people probably will be indifferent until they learn more right one way or the other but, but, this, but this is currently on hold right uh no no not the not the deployment of infrastructure the flipping of the switch on yeah, the rate yeah okay. yeah and and so just so you know real quick in the reason it's on hold is the faa uh it's the administration, they administer airports and plane travel and all that air travel, air traffic. Um, the, where this, this technology has been deployed in Europe, there was also a concern, but you know, for better or worse, Europe's got better laws than we do. And they, they tend to be a little bit less in the pocket of industry and big corporate industry, but not much better. But enough that they, we required that they knock down the signal from the transmitters within a certain radius of airports or any 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 location that might impact uh, air traffic control. Um, Verizon and AT and T they 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 were planning to implement the full powered signal right next to airports, and the FAA said no, please don't do that, and they said no, we're going to do it anyway. I guess uh, their better judgment came into play and they said, okay, we won't. And in the meantime, the FAA is coming up with some, I don't know, interim regulations to try to figure out uh, how to deploy this stuff proximate to airports. But in terms of its rollout, it's there. The infrastructure's there. I don't know if it's in Hardwick yet. Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna hit the denser population areas where they can get the best bang for their buck. So the Bennington's, the Burlington's, Winooski's, Rattleboro's, and the like. Judith, would you regard yourself as being properly warned if when the town gets this indication that they were to put, if the town, I guess it would be Casey, were to put this on the website, would, would you feel properly warned if that was the way it were handled, maybe also put on Front Porch Forum? With, I'd be glad that that was uh, given uh, as warning, but but so, so many towns now are, are are doing this right to know, and the more education we all get, we all need education about what's going on. The the better, and um, it's uh, as I said, I'm just not a good speaker. Um, I get my thoughts all. Um, and so I very much would like to see what's happening with the other towns uh, that, that we, we get this right to know put on the agenda in March so that there's more and more education. Um, and uh, that's really what I would like to see. So I just would like to pose the question, um, you know, there, there's lots of development that happens around the nation and the state and um, and this is, a, you know, the a 5G rollout, which appears to be the focus of this discussion, even though the, um, the sample warning um, language you read included all forms of radiation that are licensed, I think. Um, so I, I guess I'm just wondering why, why should we place the onus on the town 
to alert people in this way? Why not just let people there? Because they're and my guess is that it's a minority of folks who are interested in following it. Well, why don't those folks just follow the PUC website? Well, that the the if I might, um, the problem is most not. Folk, I'm guessing folks like Judith even slap me if I'm wrong may not be have the time or even the know how to navigate the PUC website no, or I, or just would just be rare to, to you know I do this for a living I. I follow all this and I participate uh, to PUC on occasion. Um, and that website, have you ever, uh, Eric, sounds like you're, you're familiar with it. Um, it yeah, is, I've looked up various cases that yeah. are pending, yeah. Yeah, EPUC is is not as much, as, I'm, I'm happy it's there, but it's not easy to navigate. And if you're not really computer savvy and you, don't, you have to set up and set up an account, I mean, the idea is if if your neighbor is going to put in a, I guess you have zoning in your town, right? Correct. We do. If your neighbor is going to put a dormer on their house, there's notice that goes that goes out to the neighborhood. No, no, there is not. Change, not if they don't change the footprint of their building. Okay, if your neighbor changes the footprint, I, I should say. Okay, I'm thinking Callis. Um, actually, in Callis, it's the same as you. <laughs> if, if in your town, like Callis, if you expand the footprint of your building, there, there's a notice that's published. And, you know, for the most part, like you said, Eric, most people don't care. So that means I, that they do. So when when Hardwick Electric puts new transformers on poles, we don't we don't get any notice. No, they don't transmit. Those, those transformers are for managing your, your electric grid. This is for transmission apparatus that, yep. that invades people's space and has a frankly an effect on people's health and well-being. It's 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 the fact. The FCC actually has made it uh, illegal for states to regulate based on health impacts, regardless. Regardless. So there was a case that's that's that went to court to the DC Circuit Court. And it was recently decided that the FCC violated the law, the federal law, and they remanded back to the FCC for them to update their regulations based on the new science, the, the, the international peer-reviewed science on this and the health implications. Um, so it's, it's real. And this is about, really, to me, community right to know is just providing your citizens the fair chance to participate in process, and it would be at PUC, it wouldn't be at your level. It would be, which is why I come back to, if you're interested in it, you're gonna to have to participate at the PUC, but so why not follow that? It. They won't know about it. The regulars, you, I, I don't know, how many people on your select board even know what the PUC is? The, two, two, three. I definitely think that we all do. Oh, you all do, okay. okay. So that would be four of four tonight. Four of four, awesome. Yeah, you got a good select board. Make sure you see Emily, uh, Emily would like to say something. Emily? Hi, um, I would like to go back to what Wiz was asking. Um, I, I think that we're asking for an initiative to be at the town meeting that asks the citizens of Hardwick if they feel that they deserve to have a, um, a, you know, a, a, a plain notification to them that is easy, easily visible and will come to their attention if this is to happen. So uh, it, it doesn't assume anything. That's why it's going to the town meeting to find out if a majority of citizens in Hardwick would like to see this notice. So. Uh, and then that's how you will gauge what the interest level is in the town with, to have this notice. So I guess the question is, if it does go as a on the town meeting as an initiative, then I, it, I, don't know, I, I guess it would be up to the select board to approve the language of what the question is on the town meeting um, ballot. I would like for you interested, those of you who, who have brought this initiative for us to provide us with the language, we yeah. will run it past our lawyer to see if there's anything in there that could be problems. 
and then it comes back to us to approve. So this is the 11th hour though, Wiz, because we have, as our last item, we were gonna approve the warning. Right, and so this is gonna to have to wait till next year. That oh. sounds good to me. Oh, I, I, I'm, isn't the language there already though? Is it written out as far as- uh, I have language with We have seen through. no language. I asked to see language two weeks ago and there has been no language brought forward and for the most part, we don't put no, anything I, I, on the I ballot without the lawyer's approval. I, I was shunted off to something that wasn't necessary. And, and that took a lot of time by you and, and perhaps Kaylee uh, approved it. Uh, uh, um, so all I wanted was to come to a select board meeting because you do have the capability of putting this on the agenda in March and it's already people in our town have been so harmed we have people that have bought property and uh the 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 cell tower up on um, hopkinson hill is going to be heightened and and they just bought it and they were promised you know the story i'm just gonna say they were promised no no it's going to stay the same and, and so they went and bought this property and they would never have done it we have people who are very ill that live near that what, what? What, so what 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 you're asking is just the right to know that this is going to happen that's it's right. not going to change it from happening it's going to help educate people so if, it's going to open eyes okay so basically um if this happens and you know that it happens your option is what move not buy the property they were going to buy for for this person i know who's very but, ill but, he would move but, but would they have the would those people be notified prior to buying that property if they were from another state would they or would that be you know what i'm saying like what what so really what what you're asking from from us to notify the public for something that that may happen anyways I'm not sure why you're all having a problem. I, I don't have a problem. I'm just trying to like, I, I'm looking at the steps. And so and the, the idea is this is not that complex. Yeah. You put it on your warning. And as what is your name? Emily. As Emily so clearly articulated, let your voters decide up or down. All they do is they vote yes or no. They check the box, yes or no. I believe that the language was submitted last year. Um, I actually don't remember exactly what happened with the process. We petitioned to have it on the town meeting ballot last year. Um, I don't think it was. I don't think um, you had enough signatures. We didn't have quite enough signatures. So we're asking you to put it on the ballot without that number of signatures um the language is there though they, i mean it's i can forward the language to you that it was, yeah i i believe we have the language already because we worked on it with uh, the members of the select board and with the town manager and with the uh i've not the name is escaping me of the person who is responsible for setting the uh you know for formatting the town meeting ballot and everything like that uh, the, the, I, I think it's the, the same initiative. It's just that we didn't have quite enough signatures last year. Right, and we started really late with it. We got quite a lot uh, having started. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I also seem to remember it was in the midst of that deadline was thrown at us very last minute. And it was in the midst of a severe, <clears throat> severe weather week that we were trying to get these signatures together. And so the, de I, the deadline's the same every year. Okay. So I'm not a, this is not my full-time job. I'm, this is, you know, I have, it, this is a COVID nightmare year for everybody. Okay. We're asking you to, to just put this on the ballot, you know, cause I, I feel like that there is um, enough concern and it, you putting it on the ballot is not a, uh, saying that you agree with it or not, or that it's going to happen or not, but it will gauge whether there's enough community interest in having this uh, um, plainly put in front of the population. If there's not enough interest, it's not going to pass. So last year, there wasn't enough interest to... That's not true. That last oh. year, there was, 
you know, <clears throat> the people who were concerned about this did not find out about it early enough to actually do this. The same thing as this year. Everyone is living in crisis. This is not our full-time job. I, I have a number of other concerns as well. So it's just um, town meeting. When is it happening? Is it like six it, weeks it's, So it's usually the first Tuesday in March. First Tuesday in March. Like I, um, I believe that's by statute in all towns that haven't changed it. Um, I don't understand what the time problem is. Uh, you, know, you need the uh, language by by statute. Mm -hmm. By statute, the the warning has to be approved. It has to be approved by tomorrow. So by tomorrow. You can get it in the paper. Yeah. Do, by for, the deadline. for public notice. Well, it's not by statute because we we are approving our warning next Monday. It, but it's coming. Right, up. we have it's by, it's the printer is pushing us a bit. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah the stat. Yeah, yeah, Monday. I believe is. that the language from last year has already been approved. Yeah. yeah. This last year, the language is there. Um, so uh, we can resubmit the same language that we did last year and put it on your desk tomorrow. Can I, um, can I read the language from last year? Um. I don't have it in front of me. I could find it, but you know, uh, a minute or two, you know. Um, I, I I think the language that was read tonight was probably preferable to the language from last year because the language that was read tonight from the callous warning had um, reference to uh, licensed um, radiation, and I think that was was one problem I had last year was. There, there are lots of forms of radiation around us all the time. Got it, yeah. It's just something that we live with. You know, probably the biggest source is the sun. So you want it to be a little bit more specified. And because, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And we're lots of things. About, yes, we're talking about re radiation related to wireless infrastructure, not just random sources of radiation. Um, our sources ourselves, man-made sources, because the sun is not man-made. Yeah, I, if that's in the callous language, it would it be possible for that to be um, submitted with the name of the town, substituted and given to wh whoever is in charge of putting this together for the town? Where did the callous language come from, and did that go past the town's lawyer? John, can you answer uh, that? There's there's no legal issue with letting folks know what's going on in town. If there's, you know, excuse my candidness, but if if the town voted to provide notice every time the highway department got a new truck or something, they could do that. It's not a, a legal question. That's whether true. Let I think it's quite similar to that, actually. Yeah. So so um you know, which I also wouldn't want to do. Say, if, if something passes on a warning and then it's determined by your council to be illegal, you don't do it. You know, yeah. this is at heart. What, what's, um, I'm not so concerned about illegal. I'm concerned about what what they call comma problems that that you're trying to say something, words get out of order, there, there's punctuation goes in and if push comes to shove, you've got a problem because the language was not clear. That's my issue, that it's not whether this is, and frankly, if all you want us to do is put a notice on the website and maybe announce it on Front Porch Forum, it doesn't seem at all unreasonable. It's just that the way it gets stated needs to be very clear so that there are no booby traps in the language. So the that's language, why I'm pushing the language. The language that I, I drafted for our select board, and again, I am on the select board, and we do have counsel, and he reviews the entirety of our warning before it gets published, by the way. So he will review this, but this is not a, a legal issue, really. Um, it, the way, but the way I drafted it, you know, selfishly as a select board member, we don't have a town manager, was so that our town had very broad uh, discretion to decide how it wanted to provide that notice. If Can you was... read the language, that the existing language that you have for Callus? Yes, I will read it aloud again. Don Fair, if you please, Donna. Uh, 
I'll add Hardwick instead of where Callis was, okay? So if you were to approve this for a warning, shall the voters of the town of Hardwick require its town government to inform and provide notice to its residents when sources of radiation such as, but not limited to, that generated by cell towers slash transmitters, comma, Wi-Fi tower transmitters, comma, and 5G antenna, comma, are being proposed for licensing and installation within the town limits. So it's for commercial licensed transmission facilities. And so, and as, as I said, I, my, my, our plan I, that, I, that I would put forth at our select board subsequent meetings to this being approved, which I expect it will be, it's not that controversial, um, is we post it on our website. And because we're, we always post everything on front porch form, we would also utilize that tool. That would be it, you know. Can I ask a question, please? I, I just want to know if this whole situation could be easily resolved without even going to the ballot or making alterations to the warning at all, and simply by a policy shift within the town that any notifications that we receive from utilities or such that we receive would just get scanned and thrown up on the web page and maybe posted to front porch forum that uh -huh. it's out there. It would be simple, straightforward. It would be minimal time and definitely less aggravation than making a warning and running it through lawyers and putting it out there. The information is public information anyway. Mm -hmm. That's fully within the discretion of your select board right now and has been. Um, but, you know, putting it on the ballot kind of makes it a priority. You know, it doesn't get pushed to the side or forgotten about, you know, that's, and, you know, frankly, we have office staff and we want to, in, in Callis, we want to make sure the staff make it a priority. That's what the, the initiative's about. And uh, it's that simple, but you're right, Michael, um, that is absolutely fully within the town's discretion to do that. So if we did that, would that satisfy folks if we just said we're going to put a notice on the website when, uh, when we get one of these letters? I, I, I guess I like the idea of, of, um, of, of putting it you know, it, it feels so democratic uh, to have uh, at town meeting to, to, to have people alerted to the fact that there's something something to have a warning about. And uh, okay. yeah, my preference would be as well to have it go at the town meeting because that would alert the town that it is something that they can look for. Yes. Because if you just pass it at, I mean, how many people, quite honestly, watch select board meetings? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this is our opportunity as a town to find out what's happening in our town. So I feel like it is a much more democratic way to uh, to gauge the the uh, the town's um, level of interest uh, concerning this. Okay. If you approve that that you would put it on the town website, I would definitely want you to also post it on Front Porch Forum because that's that's something that does um, get seen by a lot of people. It, it doesn't put the onus on them to be checking the town website on a regular basis in case, God forbid, a utility poll is going to go up. Because that's, 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 you know, everyone is involved with their own lives, raising their families. They're not going to be so, prowling around for information about polls. It's kind of the crux of the issue, though, isn't it? That um, people who are interested in this should be paying attention to it. And they already can. But that's not true. People who are interested, people need to be educated. And when you see it, town meeting, our democratic grassroots, wonderful thing. When you see it there, you know, oh. What's this about? And you and you're open to hearing more. And I just don't get what the problem is. We do a lot of educating. I don't know. I've never been to a heart of town meeting. Um, I used to live in Woodbury for 15 years, and I've been in Calus for 20. Um, 
at both of those town meetings, we did a lot of educating. We're not going to do much this year. No, but ballot initiatives are part of that. I assume you're going to be performing an Australian ballot. We are. We're going to do Australian ballot. And so we have an informational meeting in advance. I don't know if you're right. going to do that. And so yeah, yeah. we walk through the ballot items and, yeah. and, and folks will speak to each, uh, each worn article and provide information. Anyway. And that becomes an educational process. Yeah. That's how it okay. works. All right. Um, I want to move us along. I feel like we've spent an awful lot of time on this tonight. Um, so we are, what does the select board want to do? It did. My concern was that they were asking the town staff to send out letters and lots of complicated personalized notification. If all they want is a publication, as Michael said, maybe put the letter up on the website, make a note, make a pointer to Front Porch Forum to for people that that's there and they should go look if they're interested. That doesn't, <clears throat> that doesn't seem inordinately demanding of the town staff time. I find it curious that nobody has mentioned the newspaper, but that's a whole different problem. If that's what they're asking for, and will Bill go over our, our ballot before it goes out? Oh, yeah. He will, the warning. Will that Bill go over the warning before it goes out? I don't think he does, no. 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 But I mean, the wording, I think, is seems really benign. Yeah. yeah. I just my. So I my, would go ahead. Liz. No, go ahead, Opie. I, I just <clears throat> I'm wondering. Um, I'm new to the the process, but I seem to remember from past town meetings, and I don't know if this has to happen if we have an in-person town meeting. But the idea of a non-binding resolution. Yeah, but that's not what they're asking for. That's but you're what right. They're asking for. Right, right. Okay. If if we put it on the ballot and they vote yes, it has the same effect of our doing what Michael suggested, which is that we just make a policy saying, go ahead and do this. If they put it on the ballot. And they and it gets voted down, then we had we could still make a policy saying this is what we should do. Yep. Um, so I would move that we modify the the proper nouns in the callus, you know, structure the callus warning article to suit the Hardwick warning article structure and put it on the ballot and see what happens. That was a motion? That was a motion. I'll second it. I have a couple of questions on that wording. All right, discussion on that? I, I mean, I, don't, I can't really discuss, but I just have a couple of, I, I'd like to get that reviewed by the, the town attorney. Okay. Yeah, my concern on the on the wording and all that stuff is that here we so we go ahead and do it and we um, and it maybe gets passed by the voters, which is great. Um, is there any we live in a litigious society? Is there any grounds for some homeowner who doesn't take the initiative and actually see the notice to then sue the town because they didn't know, even though we made it available in those places. It would be a groundless lawsuit. You know, you can sue for anything. Um, I know this comes up every day at our select board and when the attorney's present, uh, which is usually remotely now, um, he says the same thing. We, you can be sued every day for anything. It has to do whether the suit has merit um, in terms of sustaining it. Um, so, but uh, uh, you folks have, and the town of Callis has 
select board has very broad discretion. This article was written with that in mind. And we, we decide how to warn it and if they don't like it, that, that suit has not, does not have merit. Because we, at the end of the day, we retain that discretion on how okay. to. All right. So Tanya has something she wants to add. So we'll have to set up another meeting then if we're gonna, if you're gonna get that added to the ballot and if he wants to get it approved by Phil. For you guys to approve the new warning, then I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't need it approved by Bill. Uh, I mean, I, 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 no, yeah. you can just send it. Yeah. I sent it. Yeah. So did you guys catch that? Can you repeat? Um, you'll have to have. We'll have to warn another public meeting to approve the change of the ballot. The warning. Unless they get exactly what you want for wording, I can't really right now. But that's fine. Did you catch that? No. So we need to either get the wording correct now, or um, have another meeting to for the the change in the morning. In that case, I think we should just make a policy change. So we can so we can adopt the warning tonight, make a policy change that that will happen, make an announcement to that effect. Judith is right; it won't have the same educational factor, but time is the enemy here. So we could also, you know, share a screen at the end when we get to the, our last item where we're approving the warning. Somebody could share a screen and we could see it typed out on the warning tonight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second on the table um, to add the, I believe Wiz's motion was to um, add the, the so-called right to know um, uh, initiative or whatever to the ballot as written for Callus, but substituting proper nouns for Hardwick. Yeah, and, and our, our Articles you see, you know, will the town vote to that? There, there's some subtlety changes in the language that don't have any effect, but it just, you know, for the parallelism of the warning itself. First three or four words are different. So, well, uh, okay. Somebody want to call or eyes? <laughs> So, all right, so we have a, um, a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? I just think that we're going to run into time frame issues because this has to be finished by 5 p.m. on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I think there was a little bit of a push to get the printers ahead of that because they were backed up and we need to get it printed so we can get it mailed. Um, but we could look at it tonight at, at the end look at it tonight at the end and if we don't pass it tonight at the end then it will take it on as a policy later okay so uh so shall uh, so i ask to table my motion no let's no. vote on it okay, okay. all in f so so you're suggesting you vote it <laughs> Sarah, you're I just suggesting want to put it on there I'm you do want on there. you are yep okay so all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, oh my God, it pains me to vote aye on this, but I guess I'll go along just because I want to move on. Let the people so pass anyway. Huh? Let the p voters decide. They all right, decide. so that's everybody. Um, so the motion carries and we'll add it when we get to it at the end. Too bad it's not a meeting where we have discussion, the town meeting. All right, so next is item three, select board to discuss and consider a warning item for another warning item for retail cannabis. Mm -hmm. Who has information on this? Do I have language for that one? Or information on it, anything? We don't, do you? Yeah, I do. Nope. So are we not going to vote on it? What's the, what has the task force come up with? Anything? 
we've had one meeting to discuss this and we planned on getting um, this out to the public before town meeting. I didn't, I guess I dropped the ball on this one and didn't think that uh, we needed the language for the warning, but probably should have had it. Mm. Do you, is it, do you want to try to add it and then we'll do the warning at a special meeting like tomorrow afternoon or something whenever people can do it or? Maybe Super Monday because it needs to be warned, right? No, uh, you can, well, yeah. If we're really in, yes. Special meeting needs a day, 24 hours, I guess. Is it, is this something, uh, oh, Emily, I think you're typing it. Could you put your, um, your thing on mute, please? Thank you. Uh, do, uh, what's the, what, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know what the language would look like. We would need to have the language to put it on there. Do we, is it important enough to get it on there? Yes. Yes. We need that. Well, can we, do we, can we meet on Monday? Do we have a quorum that can meet on Monday? I know that Kaylee was not available, right? I can be there. I cannot meet Monday afternoon. I can meet Monday morning. Okay. I can meet Monday morning or afternoon. I can as well. Um, me too. Okay. So, so but we put both of these items. Till then. And uh, Mr. Upson, you're going to organize us for another get together to, to uh, prove the warning. Monday at 10 o'clock. Is that? Yep. And then 10 a.m. And you're going to push out to the select board ahead of time uh, a draft warning that has both these the new, new items. On. Yep. Great. And other towns have voted on this already, right? So Correct. it shouldn't be that hard to find the language, right? Right. Yeah, a lot of towns have already, yep. Yeah. Some did it last year. Yeah, I think the language is pretty, it may even be defined in statute. It's, Standardized. Yeah. Okay, um, that's good. That actually simplifies things for tonight. So moving on, item four, select board to consider appointing the assessor, Matt Krajewski, to fulfill all lister duties until a charter change is processed and accepted. And the issue here is that um, the listers have in fact, uh, or two of the three anyway, listers have in fact retired effective the end of 2021, I believe, or thereabouts. And so um, there are some things there that need to be done. Um, that, that probably our best path forward is to um, appoint Matt, who's our assessor to do them. And didn't Casey build a little in the budget just because of this yeah. little overlap? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll make the motion that we appoint um, Matt, the assessor to fulfill all lister duties until the charter change is uh, processed and accepted. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And please, aye. there we go. That's all four. Um, so motion carries. Thank you, Matt. All right. Hey, thank you. Thanks that was easy. Lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on. I on Monday, you feel free. So. Moving on, item five, select board to authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with KAS Consulting for a brownfield remediation at the Yellow Barn. This is something that is paid for through a um, EPA grant that comes through the Vermont um, ACCD, Agency of Commerce and Community Development. So it's, fun, it's completely funded um, and is something that needs to happen for the Yellow Barn project to move forward. There was a competitive bid process. KES was the, the best bid. 
Um, so I would love to hear a motion to um, have the town manager sign that contract. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And Sherry said aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. So that's everybody. So motion carries. Thank you. Um, next is item six select board to review and consider approving the 2022 town meeting warning. We're going to put this off until um, we can meet again, which uh, at least currently tentatively penciling in 10 a.m. Monday, the 24th. Is that 24? Yep. Yes. Okay. So we're not going to do that. Um, then uh, select board reports, new business, old business. I have a report from the downtown commission. Great. We're just about to launch our, our template uh, for the banner, the second set of banners that the grant from the community foundation gave us. So um, this is the set 15 banners that will be um, open for uh, organ local organizations like trails or the townhouse or the historical society or I don't know Hazen yeah. you no know, the template looks great or whatever so there's a there'll be a template we're gonna put it in on front porch form I think and it'll be like a fillable thing I don't know how to do this stuff but Abra is doing it and um, the first 15 people are organizations that come forward with the all the right um, information, the the logo in the format that it needs to be in, et cetera, et cetera, will be able to have this thing free, uh, paid for by the grant. If people need a little technical assistance, getting their image to, you know, fit in a proper way or make it an EPS or a TIFF or whatever the required stuff is, Abra will offer her services. She, she's very reasonable. Um, that part would be some cost to the organization. The grant won't cover that part, but the beautiful banner, they will. So. So people need to look for the announcement and that'll tell them who to contact. Keep an eye out on Front Porch Forum and then, um, yeah, I'll try to, yeah. And if anybody has questions, they can stop in and ask me. Great. Call me. That's great. Thanks, yeah, Sherry. it's exciting. And so yeah. the first set, there are two sets of banners, right? The first set, the one that says, welcome to Hardwick and is um, uh, all the same banner uh, is at the printer right now. So two to three weeks, we might see that completed. And then maybe, you know, a week or so after that, we'll replace the snowflakes with our brand new, beautiful Welcome to Hardwick banners. Before Memorial Day Parade. Well, yeah, but you know, it's that in between time because those Oh, those yeah, uh, yeah. out of the box banners are kind of blah in the spring. I mean, the snowflakes are okay, but you know, <laughs> not so special. Yeah. Maybe it'll be sort of aligned okay. when the electrician uh, gets the poles so that we can put the winter placemaking lights and wrap the poles with the white lights too. It'll be a spectacular downtown. Just spectacular. Saying. Great. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Other reports, new business, old business? Um, what's going on with the Yellow Barn? Yellow Barn, it, so it's hard for me to be succinct about the Yellow Barn, but let's, let's say, um, I'll try to be succinct and say that the, um, the goal right now is to get the project out to bid by the end of January, which I think is a bit of a stretch goal because we're still working with funders to approve the um, the everything, all the all the administrative stuff. It's all pretty administrative, but we we need to get approval mostly from EDA before we can go out to bid. And we're trying to pushing to get that to happen by the end of the month. Succinct enough. Congratulations. <laughs> well. I'll save congratulations until we get there, at least for that part. No, congratulations on your succinctness. Oh, thank you. 
Um, I will make a report that um, the select board was a, was sad to hear the passing of David Raphael, oh, who yeah. um, we had uh, who had come up and helped us to uh, um, community engagement community engagement process around the swinging bridge, and he had great ideas around um, the like trying to make it more of a park type atmosphere on either side of the bridge and um, really, and, you know, he's, he's a great guy. It's sad to hear that he's gone, but that was, that was the best obituary I have ever read. It was somebody, a very nice obituary. Yeah. Somebody it, knows how to write. Yeah. 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 It's a shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where was the yeah. obituary? It was in seven days. Um, I got it online and and I shared it just, I got it last night late. It made me not sleep well. It was really sad, but it's nice. I'll share it with you, Wiz. I'll send okay, you Okay, thank you. Send it to the whole board because it was, okay. that was really nice. And he was, he was a great, great guy. And that's in another example of administrative slowness, that's something where he, passed away before we get a contract signed. Right. Holy cow. But hopefully, um, well, at least he was working with- um, Bob Neald. Bob Neald, who's yeah. the engineer on the thing. And so maybe- Yeah. Different maybe. architect or may, someone else can work also with Bob Neald. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Have bummer. some continuity. Yeah. Okay. Any other select board reports, new business, old business? Um, could we have a I have something? Um, I just want to remind the Harvard voters who are interested in running for office, they don't have to do a petition this year, we learned yesterday, but anybody who's interested just has to bring in still Monday, the 24th by 5 p.m. Uh, consent, uh, consent to candidate form, and we can print it from the website or stop into the office, but we still need that form to get your name on the ballot by Monday, 5 p.m. Great, thank you for that reminder. And I'll put a list on the website tomorrow and front porch floor of all the all the offices. Great, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, could uh, could we have a motion to go into executive session for personnel matters to include the town manager? Are we including anyone else, Mr. Epson? No. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, business right. to conduct. Um, we have uh, a proposed separation agreement. Is that the Could title? I, would you like me to make a motion? I'd like to make the motion to authorize um, you, Eric, to sign the separation agreement and general release with Darren Barber and the Hardwick Police Department. Second. Okay, um, any discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm gonna abstain. Aye. So we have Wiz, Sherry, Eric as ayes and Michael is in that abstention. Good. Is the thing tomorrow at 2.30, is it on Zoom or? How are you doing it? Yes, Zoom. Because I could maybe do it from there. They probably have Wi-Fi. Ha they have Wi-Fi. Let's see if Kaylee can do it. And if yeah. she can't, you could be backup. Yeah, I, I could maybe be backup. Sorry to be dropping this so late. Sorry. Um, all right. 
So that's all our business. I just want to close with a big thank you to David Upson for his work as town manager thus far. It's greatly appreciated. It is. It is. I agree. Wholeheartedly. It's a hard job. I think he was a good hire. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we hired him. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm still here. There's so many. Oh, he's still here? Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm I'm writing motion to adjourn. So, yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good Thank night. Thanks, everybody.